Here on Flow FM, great to be chatting again with Angus Gidley Baird from Rabo Bank. How are you, Angus? Good, thanks, Ricky. Yourself? All right, thank you. I look like um, when we look at the cattle and sheep markets here in Australia, at least we had a little bit of uh, I don't know what it was, a little bit of a blip, but we're back on the upward trend. Maybe not back where the prices were, but uh, we've had some recovery on both fronts. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, yeah, the cattle market been trending down, um, and and I think that was probably reasonable. It was probably going a little bit faster than I had thought it might have, but. Um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't too um, much of a concern, I don't think. But yes, you're right. It has lifted back up again. We see the um, the Eastern Young Cattle Indicator at the moment sitting at around about 9.25 or a little bit higher than that. So it's, it's edged back up over the nine again, which is encouraging. Yep. Um, the lamb one, on the other hand, um, yeah, it, it was a bit. I don't know. It got me a little bit concerned there. It dropped quite dramatically uh, in in late July, early August, uh, but it has returned back up around. Or just under seven fifty now, so seven thirty seven I think for trade lambs at the moment. Yeah, um, and I think Meat and Livestock Australia have been trying to emphasise I mean, A, first of all, Australia remains foot and mouth disease free, but also uh, along the five year average these are still pretty decent prices. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You you, you compare them well, I have got graphs that you run the five year average and the ten year range, they're all in that upper band. Uh, I don't know what decile they're in, but yeah, they're all they're all very strong prices, very good prices historically speaking. Um and this time of year, we'd expect those land prices to be a little bit stronger. But again, we saw in 2020 a similar situation. The, the volumes dropped a fair bit. I was just looking at slaughter numbers for lambs. And we do seem there was a bit of a dip last week. So um, whether or not that was a case of, you know, some processes struggling, uh, I know that the uh, I think one of the first rounds of that Pacific Island worker scheme is coming to an end and we might see some workers leave the abattoir industry here. Um, so maybe there's a bit of a shortage, but we did see overall slaughter numbers on the East Coast dip uh, late July there, but they've started to pick back up again. And that's, you know, probably reflected in the prices picking up again too as as buyers and processors come back into the market. Yeah, and I guess it's, um, it's always hard to predict where the markets are heading, but you would think that on the lamb front that we would keep tracking in somewhat an upward direction, even though in the last week or so it sort of wobbled around that sort of 7.20, 7.30 mark. Yeah, definitely. This time of year would generally, on, on average, historically, be the stronger part of the market just because of lower supplies. And as those new lambs come onto the market sort of towards September, October, particularly November, we, we generally see the prices come back down again. So it was a bit unusual that it dropped, but as I said, similar sort of thing happened back in 2020. The market then corrected itself, and by October it was back up around the sort of 750 to dollars mark again. So I'm thinking, you know, and looking at that the U.S. market is still strong. Um, Australian volumes are pretty good. New Zealand volumes are uh, a little bit softer at the moment. So I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be tracking it around that sort of 750 to $8 mark as we head into the new season lambs. And again, um, I don't see much downside at the moment. Yeah, that's good. And it's a bit of upside as well when it comes to the Chinese meat markets. I see a picture of yourself with your um, Hong Kong-based senior animal proteins analyst, Chen Jun Pan, saying that uh, the Chinese banquets are potentially coming back on. And that's going to feed into the market to some degree in terms of demand for meat products. Yeah, it has. And, and interestingly, we've seen you know lamb export to China drop um, quite significantly this year. Uh, but mutton exports have been the same. I think the mutton exports might have actually increased. So it does reflect some of the commentary that comes out of China and Shenzhen telling us in terms of obviously the lockdowns there mean that, that people in cities and, and in rural areas have not been able to go out and have their traditional banquets and, and social gatherings. And as a result, you know, a lot of that sheep meat trade consumed through hot pots and social functions, etc., has not been consumed. Um, interestingly and encouragingly, we still see retail prices are still high, though. So the price hasn't come back down. It's just the fact that they haven't been able to, those sales channels just haven't been taking the volumes. Um, and as if that lockdown um, policy is relaxed and we start to see people get back out and food service sales start to pick up again, um, we'd expect the volumes to start to pick up again into China. Great news. Uh, thanks, Angus Gidley Baird, Senior Proteins Analyst at Rabobank. Thanks for your analysis today. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Always good to chat. Thanks, Ricky.